Hello, my name is Jitters and welcome back to another episode of Why Nobody Plays. In this episode, I'm going to be talking about Neon. She's a duelist that seemed to have a lot of potential but hasn't really met up to those expectations ever since release. She's been seeing a less than stellar amount of play with one of if not the lowest pick rates in pro play, as well as one of the lowest pick rates out of any agent in rank based on blitz stats. It's quite insane to see how little she's actually getting played, so in this video we're going to try to explain why that's the case, as well as come up with some potential fixes that could help her pick rate out. But of course, as always, before we get into that, we first need to talk about some of the positives of Neon's kit. The first thing that comes to mind is her mobility. High mobility is something that a lot of the best agents have. Think Jets Dash and Updraft, Raises Satchels, and even Chambers TPs. It's pretty hard to ignore how strong being able to reposition quickly can be, and Neon's mobility isn't really on a cooldown. Of course she can only slide once per round unless she manages to get 2 kills, but her sprint is based on a meter that recharges over time. This means that she can sprint pretty much whenever she wants as long as she manages her meter well. This is so good for making quick rotations, it makes jiggle peeking safer, and overall just makes you harder to hit. She can also use the momentum from this ability to even get on high ground in some cases. Like on Breeze where if you have a teammate helping you, you're able to boost yourself all the way up to the top of the pyramids. Movement is a very important part of Valorant and an agent like Neon is able to take what you can do with your movement to another level. Another pro that Neon has is her stun which is one of the most annoying abilities in the game. She can stun two different areas and the stun comes out so quick and covers such a wide area that it's really hard to dodge if she knows what she's doing. Especially when comboed with her speed, she's able to get on top of you so quickly and confirm the kill on you while you're still vulnerable. She also gets two charges so if she's able to land the first one, the second one is literally impossible to dodge thanks to the movement debuff. And together they leave you stunned for 6 seconds. Do you know how long 6 seconds is in a game like Valorant? Well in case you don't, here you go. I think I made my point. I'm sure there are lineups for this ability to hit two high impact spots on certain maps, but honestly even if you don't know them you can kinda just freehand them since they're so forgiving. Anyone who doesn't think Relay Bolt's a powerful ability is on something, and I want some. Finally, the last pro I want to talk about is her ultimate. Neon's Overdrive falls into the class of ultimates that acts like a free weapon. Think Jet's Knives or Chamber's Operator. These abilities are all great to have for a similar reason. They allow the agent to help improve their team's economy since they don't need to spend money on a weapon for a round. This helps agents like Neon to have more full buy rounds than other agents since every few rounds they get a gun for free. Neon's able to run and gun at full speed and even slide with her ult with perfect accuracy, making her extremely difficult to hit and can be really annoying to play against. There's nothing like getting outplayed by an ulting Neon. And that's all for her pros and there seems to be a lot. She has a lot of things going for her which is why she seemed like such a strong agent when we first saw her. Unfortunately along with those pros, she also comes with some cons that make it hard to justify playing her. So let's talk about those cons. For starters, we've talked about her movement being insane, but the problem is that it requires the player using her to have good movement in the first place. The average player's movement in Valorant is not very good to say the least and mine included. This means that most players are not really good enough to be able to get much out of one of Neon's biggest strengths. I don't really like adding cons that come down to players not being good, but this is arguably one of the biggest reasons why you wouldn't see one in lower elos. They can't really take advantage of one of the things that make Neon, Neon. That being said, I promise that this is the only point I'm going to be talking about that has to do with player skill. The next con I want to talk about is that her ultimate, although it has advantages like improving your eco, has a few other problems with it that make it worse than other similar ults. For one, the time to kill is a few seconds. Although it can be hard to hit Neon sometimes while she's sprinting at you, if you can hit her in the head, she'll die just the same and doesn't have a way to speed up the kill time. Compared to Jet and Chamber, if they just hit one shot, you die pretty much instantly. Neon's ult on the other hand takes a couple seconds to melt enemies with full health. On top of that, the ultimate also suffers from damage drop off which is arguably more important. This really limits the range of the ult and means you can't take any fight with it. You have to make sure you're taking shorter range engagements otherwise you won't deal enough damage and will be an easy pick for an enemy player. It's kinda like going in with a spectre compared to a vandal or phantom. The final con I wanted to talk about is that Neon doesn't really fill a role that's missing in Valorant. She's not great with an op so you're gonna want either a Jet or a Chamber on your team if you pick her. And the thing is, Jet also fulfills the entry role that Neon's mostly built for. And Jet also has a get out of jail free card that Neon doesn't. This means that Jet can afford to play more aggressively and be relatively safe where Neon can't. She can make an aggressive play with her sprint, slide, and stuns but she's all in and if something goes wrong you're probably gonna die. You can make big plays with Neon, there's no question about it. 
but when picking a duelist, you need to ask yourself, is that play you're making big enough to justify giving up the safety that a jet has with their dash? Raze is a strong duelist on certain maps because her AoE damage and Booba can just get so much value on maps like Bind and Split that it's worth the risk of her not having that get out of jail free card. The amount of impact she can have is just too hard to pass up on. Where Neon doesn't really feel like she has any maps where she can have that kind of impact. Well then what can be done to make her good enough? Well it's pretty hard to just buff the abilities that she has because one wrong change and suddenly she can become too strong. For example her ultimate's very forgiving so you can't just make it one shot enemies like jet knives or chain result. But I do think that the range could be helped. I do think that it needs to have damage drop off to be balanced but if it had a little more range then maybe it would feel a bit better. Another ability we haven't really talked about is her version of a firewall, which is okay but sometimes hard to get it to cover areas you want it to. I think if she could curve it similar to how Phoenix can curve his wall, it would also be a good help for her kit. Other than that, I think the rest of her kit is pretty solid. Her movement's really strong and her stun is also insane. Maybe you can make her sprint animation a bit quicker, but other than that, I think it's in a good spot. I honestly think that Neon's a couple changes away from being a good agent and she doesn't really need any dramatic changes. But that's just my opinion, so let me know what you guys think. And that's all for this episode of Why Nobody Plays. I hope you all enjoyed the video, and if you did, don't forget to leave a like. Remember that if you want to catch me live, I stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash jittersval if you want to check me out. You can also follow me on Twitter where I sometimes post updates. And if you want to join my Discord community, there will also be a link in the description for that as well. And finally, don't forget to subscribe for more Valent-related content.